Hey, hello, my friends, and welcome to Classes Out. Now what? An in-depth look uh, at afternoon activities at Webb and what our students do when they're not studying. For those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Owen Wolf. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at the Webb Schools, and I'm very happy today to be joined by the newest member of the Webb Admission team who joined us uh, last um, uh, who joined us last fall and who's absolutely fantastic, uh, our admission coordinator, Alex Wiersma. Alex, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So if you've done a webinar before, a webinar with two Bs, that is, you know what's coming less, next, the obligatory sound check. If you would be so kind as to chat, as to type into the Q&A box uh, your name so that we know that we are in fact coming through loud and clear, that would be fantastic. And incidentally, this question box, which is at the bottom of your screen, is going to be your best friend throughout the presentation. If at any time you have a question for our presenters, for myself or for Ms. Wiersma, feel free to type it in and we will do our best to answer as many as we can. We're also going to be doing a live chat during uh, the webinar today, which we're very excited about. So if you click on that chat button at the bottom of your screen as well, you can communicate with any of us in real time throughout the panel. You can ask questions there. You can ask questions in the question box. And again, we will do our best to answer as many as we can. So Alex, are we coming through loud and clear? Yes, we are. All right, fantastic. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get uh, started. Uh, I have some fantastic panelists to introduce to you this afternoon. First up, we're going to start with the Director of Athletics, Mr. Steve Wishick. Mr. Wishick, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Hello, everybody. Awesome. And representing our Performing Arts faculty, we have Ms. Stephanie Plumley. Ms. Plumley, welcome to you. Hi, and welcome, everybody. And last but not least, we have our Dean of Campus Life and the coach of our swimming and diving teams, uh, Mr. Ken Rosenfeld. Mr. Rosenfeld, welcome to you too. Hey everybody, nice talk with y'all. All right, well we're gonna jump right in because we've got some good information to cover with you today. So uh, we're gonna start with uh, Mr. Wishick, uh, but Mr. Wishick, uh, feel free to take it away. Uh, let's talk about afternoon activities. Yeah, no, happy happy to do so. First of all, just want to let everybody know I've been uh, at Web now since 2003, so I've been doing this a while. I became the director of athletics and afternoon activities in uh, 2008. Uh, I have a son who's a 10th grader currently at Web, and then also two other sons uh, who's a kindergartner and a seventh grader. So certainly um, been around a while. Um, in terms of athletics, it's a really um, big part of your experience, athletics and afternoon activities. We do that every afternoon. So from approximately 3.30 to 5.30 every day, the hours shift a little bit depending on our academic day and other things going on, you will be expected to participate uh, in either an interscholastic sport. So uh, we call those CIF sports. CIF is the California Interscholastic Federation, which is our governing body. So you'll either participate in one of those sports or you'll participate in one of our afternoon activities. Um, the requirement is that you participate in a minimum of one sport per season. Um, you could participate in two, about half of our students participate in two sports a, a year, about a quarter to a third of our students participate in a sport every season. So you have to do something every afternoon and you have to do a minimum of one sport per year. Um, depending on your familiarity, sometimes people think of, you know, web as a small you know, athletic program. And I would say, you know, maybe we're small compared to other schools in terms of population, but we're not small in terms of our offerings and our commitment to athletics and afternoon programs. We field um, as many sports as there are to be, I think the only CIS sports we don't have are lacrosse and field hockey. We field everything else, um, including badminton, wrestling, aquatics, 11 man football, you name it, we field it. And the reason we do that, and you'll also see this reflected in our afternoon activity program is Yes, we are asking you to do this every afternoon. Some of you have a lot of athletic experience and this will be easy for you. Some of you, maybe this will be your first time participating on a team. Um, but if we're gonna require you to do this, we want there to be you know, at least something you're interested in trying out. And so whether you've never played a sport before, most of our teams have multiple levels of either a JV or even a freshman team for some of our programs. So whatever your background is, you're gonna be partnered with students who have similar backgrounds, similar experience. Or if you're coming to us with a lot of experience and you could play varsity as a freshman, then great, you have a chance to do that. If this is your first time ever playing a sport, and you're gonna be with other students who it's their first time playing a sport as well, and you'll share that experience together with great coaches. Um, our afternoon activity program is the same way. We have 
an immense variety of options, everything related from fitness um, to drama and robotics, which we'll talk more about in a little bit, to um, yoga and hiking. I think we're adding board sports uh, next winter. Um, so skateboarding and surfing and things like that. So there's a, just a wide variety of things, like I said. So even if you've never done it before, you're going to be paired. Hope, there's got to be something on that list that you're interested in trying. You're going to be with a passionate adult who's going to be interested in doing that with you. So a couple of resources for you. Obviously, I'll answer as many questions as we can today. You feel free to contact me after this, either through through email, and I'll be happy to answer any more questions that come up. Or, um, But other places you could get information. First of all, just our web athletics site. If you go to web.org, there's an athletics tab. You could look at all of our teams. So if you're interested in kind of the schedules and who we play and where we play, you could look up any team and kind of look at what their schedule was this last year or the years prior to that and kind of get an idea of how often we play and who we play and where we play. Um, for some of you that are a little more interested in statistics and things like that, Max Preps doesn't cover all of our sports, but it's an outside website that you could check out that has a lot of information similar. I mean, it will have a schedule, but some of our teams post stats and other things um, on that website as well. So that's another source of information. Um, a really cool thing that we do is we broadcast a lot of our home sporting events. So the NFHS network, which is a link that you see there, you can find um, basically almost all of our home games that are team sports, where it's what like a team on a field. So that's football, baseball, softball, all of our gym sports. Um, you could watch games right so even if you're not a local um, even if you're bordered from far away your parents can still log in you could watch live as it happens you could watch on demand we usually have color commentators broadcasting the varsity games so it's a really great opportunity for even those of you who are far away for your families to still be able to follow along um, if you go to that website you do have to pay to see even games on demand i think it's like ten dollars a month but you could see highlights we've put lots of highlights up there and they're free to look at right now so you can get an idea of what that looks like and another fun thing we do is depends on the sport, but I put a link up to Digital Scout. Um, a lot of times we'll do live game stats as well. So even if you're not watching live or even if we're on the road where it's not a place where we control the venue and can broadcast it live, um, you could still, your parents and family members can still follow along with live stats. So the Digital Scout link uh, is what we use for basketball. We use a different app for baseball, but those are the kinds of things um, that we do to kind of help make it available for local families who can't make it to a certain game at a certain time or to families all over the world to be able to follow along. So next up, I want to talk a little bit about robotics. So we do have a robotics team that falls under our afternoon activity uh, arena. It's a pretty impressive program. We are part of the First Tech Challenge. Um, like it says on that website, they've gone to Worlds. I think the last time I remember that they were, got to go to Houston. They do regionals. I know they've gone to Las Vegas for regionals pretty recently. There's even talk it's so popular. No promises, but we're, we're talking about can we pull off a third team with this group. So robotics meets in the fall and winter seasons. You do not need to be a participant in both seasons to be a part of robotics. Some kids do do it in the fall and the winter, but it's not a requirement to do it in the fall and winter. And just like every other thing we do, and that's also the reason kind of that push for that third team, is we wanna make sure that students of all experience levels and all abilities are able to participate and have an entry point where they're learning um, to be competitive and to work together. Another cool thing, you'll notice that that picture is actually in our gym. We are kind of the local um, point of contact for the local league. It's Robotics is a, organized a lot like a CIF sport. Um, and we host most of the competitions. Now there'll be a kind of a preseason competition early in the fall where they'll go to Monrovia or other places to try things out. But all of our league competition is based here out of web. So you get to do that on a Saturday or Sunday as the case may be. And then obviously if you advance from the league into regionals and national competition, then those will be other places as well. So I think that covers it for me, Owen. Absolutely, Mr. Wishick, thank you so much. Ms. Plumley, uh, let's move into performing arts at Webb. Hi. Um, we have a lot of performing arts to do after school. Um, our major programs are theater, technical theater, and dance. Um, we really run these like conservatories more than just rehearsals. Um, we rehearse for two main stage productions. There's a play in the fall and the musical is in the spring. Um, we provide vocal training, acting training, deep textual work, as well as rehearsing. And we like to build a feeling of family so people feel really good. Auditions are open to everyone. So it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned actor or a brand new actor. What we like to do is, if you're interested, bring you in and train you up. Um, there's also a leadership program within our performance series and uh, you could be a leader of a vocal unit or an acting unit. Um, 
And we also have a technical theater element where we have people coming in and our tech program works with everything from sound and lighting to set building to hanging lights to scenic painting. So anything that happens backstage um, happens in our technical theater program, including stage managing, which kind of bridges both performing arts and the technical theater side. Um, and that's a big leadership thing too. So what happens is everybody kind of learns everything and then you can specialize in sound or lighting or set design or something like that. Um, and then we all work towards the goal of either putting on a play or putting on a musical at the end of the season. Um, we also have a great dance company. Um, we put on a dance show every year. There's a dance option in the fall where kids can just dance if you just aren't interested in it. Like Steve was saying, you can try out anything. Um, and this is a chance to try out dance if you've never done it before. And then the following season, we have a dance concert and we work towards that. And we like to give dancers agency in terms of bringing their own talents in. So whether you're a tapper or a modern dancer or a ballerina, or just a ballet dancer, um, there's lots for you to do and ways for you to contribute in that programming as well. Um, we also have after school music uh, in the winter time and, and just the winter, um, where you can practice your own instrument and do some deep practice on that every afternoon after school. Awesome, so fantastic, wonderful. Thank you very much. Mr. Rosenfeld, clubs, organizations, leadership, and uh, all, all other good things that are web. All of the good things that are web. Thanks, Owen. Um, this is this is my 15th year actually at web, uh, but this is the first year where I'm the Dean of Campus Life. Um, a lot of people don't really know what that means. It means uh, I get to be in charge of all the fun around here. So I think I got one of the best jobs on campus around here because um, I'm in charge of the clubs. You just mentioned clubs there. And we've got over 75 different clubs at web actually right now different. We have culture clubs, we have service clubs, we have arts clubs, we have sports clubs, and then what I call just for fun clubs as well, where kids get to go ahead and uh, bring one of their activities, one of their passions, one of their interests, and share it with the rest of the community. And in order to have a club, you need to have an advisor, and you need to hold monthly meetings, and you need to have at least one event per quarter. And an event sounds kind of intimidating, like, you know, you have to throw a big party for the whole community or something. It really is that you just have to have some sort of activity, something going on related to your particular activity. So um, our kids are actually pretty, pretty actively engaged and a lot of them are members of a variety of different clubs and some of them even run a variety of different clubs and we have a lot of interaction and collaboration between them. Uh, mostly they do their activities on the weekends. Uh, sometimes they fold them in during lunchtime and just during the academic day as well, depending upon what is that they're doing. Um, but our, our kids, like I said, they're pretty actively in, engaged with these clubs. Uh, as far as leadership is concerned, uh, we've got a wide, wide variety of leadership positions around here. Uh, the big ones are, we have our HCs, uh, that's our honored cabinet members and our honored committee men. Uh, we have our prefects, and there are prefects that are in the dorm, as well as we have our day student prefects. We have our student government execs, as well as our student government uh, leaders and commissioners. We have our class presidents as well, and vice presidents. We have our peer advisors. We have our admission fellows. We have our international student liaisons, chapel council, head waiters, and like I mentioned, club leaders. And Ms. Palmley also mentioned some of the leadership positions that you have in the arts program. And then there's, of course, team captains as well. Uh, within our athletics program. So if leadership is something that you're really excited in, really interested in, in delving into, web's a great place to go ahead and do that. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you're here for four years, lots of opportunities to go ahead and not just try out different leadership positions, but develop those leadership skills to figure out exactly what kind of leader you are. Uh, we're discovering these days that uh, titles, you know, those help, but, you know, sometimes it's, about those characteristics and about those elements within you that are going to go ahead and define what kind of leader you're going to be and determine if you're going to be a leader or not around here. And so um, those are the official positions, but even if you don't ever hold one of those, doesn't mean that you uh, can't be a leader within our community around here. So I'm happy to talk with you about any of our club leadership opportunities or really also anything <coughs> that as well. Awesome. Well, Mr. Rosenfeld, Mr. Wishick, Ms. Plumley, thank you so much for your expertise. Speaking of uh, talking, uh, let's do some talking now. What questions do you, our audience, have 
for our panelists. Uh, Ms. Wiersma, all you. All right, so we have a couple questions lined up already. Our first question we have, um, so in case that someone wants to view some of the links that were shown in this presentation, will those be available in any other format for them to see? They will be, yes. So we are recording the presentation. So if you want to watch it again and uh, see all of our uh, happy faces, you're welcome to do so. And uh, yes, all the information will be contained online as well. All right, so we have another question. This one comes from Izzy. What is the difference between instrumental music and the orchestra or symphony class? I know one is during school and one is after school. Ms. Yes. Plumlee, well, how do you take that? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, instrumental music, what we call Sinfonia here, is part of the academic program, and that's our entire or orchestra program. And then after school um, is just our instrumental music program, where you can either practice your solo instrument, if you like, and I know a lot of kids get together to do chamber music or jazz. So anyone who's involved with the after school program usually collaborates with someone else um, to do something else. So it's more individualized. In the after school program and I know a lot of kids also uh, put together programs for our library series every Friday at lunchtime and they play for their peers in the library which is really fun. Great. That right, answers so, absolutely so we have a question from Neria about uh, running for freshman class president is that something that would be able to happen? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we actually delay that just a little bit. It's not as if you show up uh, for orientation and immediately start campaigning. Uh, we actually usually push that back to the end of the first quarter to give the ninth grade class an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit first. Uh, so that way, when they are choosing their leaders, they're doing so um, you know, with at least a little bit of experience and a little bit of an opportunity to get to know uh, those who are running the candidates that are there. So it's not really uh, as much of a popularity contest. It really is an opportunity for those who want to lead their class to go ahead and do so and for uh, the members of the class to go ahead and choose with uh, a little bit more uh, knowledge and experience with that person. All right, great. Okay, so we have a question coming from Ben. So this is more for Mr. Wishick. Can you participate in both robotics and a sport? Well, so yes, actually you, um, if you do participate in robotics, you will still have to participate in the sport. So I, but I wonder if the question isn't about, can I do them at the same time? And generally speaking, uh, that answer is going to be no. We expect a full commitment to your sport activity. And that does mean five days a week um, for whatever the practice time is about two hours a day. So that does generally preclude um, participating in robotics as an afternoon activity um, and your sport during the same season. Um, we do have students who obviously play a fall or winter sport are also very passionate about robotics. They do find a way to still be a part of the group. Um, but the teachers are very aware, the robotics um, instructors are very aware of that outside commitment. So the expectation of that, of those students is less, but they are still welcome to be involved. Oftentimes they will still go to the competitions. So there are ways that we work around it, but you will not officially be enrolled in robotics in a sport at the same time. Um, so that may mean for some students, it works out really well. You're interested in a spring sport. You do robotics in the fall and the winter, and then you do um, your sport in the spring, and that works out really well. Uh, for some students, if your favorite sport is a fall or a winter sport, um, you might have to work that out with uh, instructors and with the other members of your team, but our students do that um, all the time pretty successfully. All right. So we have another question also for Mr. Wishick coming from Aiden. Are swimming competition streams live as well? Uh, you know, We've kicked around the idea of being able to do that. We haven't found a way to stream them live with video that doesn't just look like a bunch of splashing in the pool that's not really able to tell very well what's going on. We do uh, post the results live as they're happening. So again, um, you may not be able to see the video or have broadcasting because we've got to get all six lanes going at once and that's a little bit of a more technical challenge for what we're able to do. But we do immediately report stats. So whether you're on the pool deck or parents are you know, across the world, if they're able to kind of follow along online, they can see the results posted as they happen. Um, but we haven't quite uh, been able, we only have one camera. So it's kind of hard to do swimming with just a one camera system. All right. So another question, which probably might be for either Ms. Pumley or Mr. Wishick, if uh, the student does dance, will they be considered an art or a sport? Good question. Um, the first season is just what it is an afternoon activity for everyone to try. And the second season working towards the dance show is considered your sport for the year. 
Okay, great. And from another student, if they join orchestra, do they have to participate in a sport as well? Yes, they're two different things. So um, the orchestra takes place during the academic day and then you need to fulfill your sports requirement after school. So we have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of athletes actually in our orchestra. So it's, it's very possible to do both fully and passionately. Great. All right, so we have another question from Aiden. Uh, when are competitions generally held? Wednesday, Saturdays? Uh, the Wednesday, Saturday, uh, it's a typical boarding school model. In, in California, there's not a lot of boarding schools, though. So our competition, we're actually, our governing body encompasses uh, public high schools, parochial high schools, independent schools, boarding schools like us. Um, we don't have a set day. We try to play as often as we can on Tuesdays and Fridays, actually. Um, our academic day ends a little bit earlier on Tuesday and Friday at 2 o'clock. In fact, it also ends uh, at 2 o'clock on Thursday because uh, Thursday is often a game day. Um, Wednesdays, we try to avoid playing as much as possible. We have some academic and evening program on Wednesdays that makes playing games a little more challenging on those days, so we try to avoid Wednesdays. Um, Mondays, Nobody really likes playing on Mondays coming after a weekend. We will have occasional Monday games, but those are pretty rare. So I would say mostly Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, occasionally we'll play on Saturday, especially um, for the varsity teams and tournaments and things of that nature. All right, great. Sorry, Alex, just real quick, because uh, Mr. Wishek briefly mentioned reason why we uh, don't usually play on Wednesdays. So we usually have community dinner on Wednesdays. And so if you're a boarding student, and actually now we're, we're opening it up to day students as well, we get together as a community for dinner and sometimes it's a formal occasion sometimes it's a little bit less formal but it's a great opportunity to go ahead and slow things down at the end of a day to go ahead and just sit down and share a meal with each other a little bit so that's usually the reason why we avoid having games uh, on on Wednesdays right great all right so we have another question actually for Mr. Rosenfeld so if you would like to start a club how easily can you do that it's, uh, it's pretty easy, actually. I would say that if it's something that you really want to do, that you are dedicated to doing, uh, what you do is you fill out a application if it's a club that doesn't exist. And that process takes about 10, 15 minutes. You find yourself an advisor. That sometimes takes five minutes. Sometimes it takes a little longer, depending upon uh, how early or late you are in the process of finding one. And um, as long as you are proposing a club that works with the mission of the school and works with the culture of the school, then uh, you can go ahead and set up a booth at our club fair. And the club fair usually happens in September. And then you get your members to sign up. And as long as you have your first meeting and send all the information to me by the uh, by mid-October, you are um, a, a club as long as you fulfill those, uh, those requirements that I had earlier, which were that you meet once, uh, once a month and that you have quarterly activity. So if it's something you're interested in doing, it's definitely something you can pull off. All right, perfect. And another club related question. Uh, do students get opportunities to participate in math contests in the math club? Oh, actually, yeah, they do. Um, oh gosh, the Mr. Caldwell would be one of the best ones to answer that one because he's been running the math club for quite a few years. And actually the math club just lets you know what they're known for beyond actually doing really well in those math competitions. They have the coolest club shirts too. They have a uh, real punny uh, club shirts. Uh, and I, I'd give an example of one, but I'm, I'm a humanities teacher and the math goes a little bit over my head, but they're hilarious. <laughs> and here's uh, another fun fact about Mr. Caldwell. Mr. Caldwell was actually my math teacher when I was in junior high. So he's an awesome guy. <laughs> really is. Um, but yeah, they definitely do. They, they participate in, in several different math competitions. Some of them on campus, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, some of them on campus, like the AMC, and then uh, some of them, they actually go off campus for those. And if I'm correct, I think some of those are actually sponsored through the club, but some are actually also done through the department, not necessarily uh, do you have to be a member of the club to participate. Yeah, I think the AMC, they uh, like it's open up to anyone who wants to participate. Great, okay, so a couple sports related questions. So for sports like volleyball or football, uh, when do uh, the seasons typically begin, such as like tryouts and trainings? Like what's the earliest sort of timeline? Well, yeah, so I mean, the timelines are a little bit up in limbo right now. We were in the process of establishing uh, the exact summer practice dates. I would say volleyball, football um, do practice over the summer. Basketball um, generally has summer practices. Um, 
I could kind of look at the dates last year. Again, these are not necessarily promises of what they were this year. Um, football started practice, I think, the first week of July uh, last year. Uh, basketball is probably also going to be practicing towards the end, middle of June uh, to July. Um, and volleyball is uh, going to be a whole new program this year. They've traditionally done it a few weeks before school started. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean that everybody, that you have to participate in those. So those, those summer practices are totally optional. That information will be coming out um, soon and probably the next month or so. We usually have it uh, up on the website towards the end of April. And so if you go to that athletics page, and I'll also send an email out to all enrolled students, um, letting them know that the information is out there, but we'll post um, summer athletics at web on our website and then I'll have all the information about when practices are when they start what you need to do basically we just need to have a physical on file before you can participate they're free for you to participate and it's not mandatory for you to go to those practices in order to participate in that sport um, in the fall that does actually bring up another point and one way that we'll be reaching out to you is when you do enroll um, and go through the enrollment process at web one of the things when you're picking classes and testing for that is you're also going to be choosing all of your afternoon activities for next year as part of the onboarding and enrollment process. So you will choose your fall, winter, and spring sports. And from that list, you will, based on the list that you choose, you will be getting direct emails, not only, you know, will they have the generic announcement on the website, but you'll get direct emails from me letting you know, hey, you signed up for football or hey, you signed up for volleyball. These are the dates and this is what to expect as far as summer and start of year. Um, generally, the official practices um, if everything goes according to plan, would be starting Monday, August 12th. That is before uh, you are expected to be here for orientation or anything of that nature. Um, you're not allowed to move in um, before orientation. If you can't make those practices, you're still going to have an opportunity to try out and be on a team uh, commensurate with your ability. But if you are local and available, um, we would love for you to be able to be at those practices on August 12th. Um, there's one extra caveat for those of you that are interested in football. CIF mandates we have 10 practices before you can participate in our first game. And based on when that first game is, you have to be practicing on Monday, August 12th um, to be able to participate in that first game. If you can't make it, that's okay. That just means you won't play in game number one, but those are things to kind of keep in mind. Um, but all that information will be coming out in the next month. And like I said, based on your actual signups and enrollment, you will be getting specific uh, emails from my office and from the coaches letting you know all the specific information for those things that you're interested in. All right, so a question for Ms. Plumley. This is, comes from Dilnar. Uh, can a student participate in both Sinfonia Orchestra and a performing art? Um, another performing art during the daytime? Uh, no. <laughs> Just the way your schedule is structured, you only have so many sections during the day. So you can do symphonia orchestra during the day, but if you did want to do anything else during the afternoon, that's possible. So you could do art during the afternoon, you could do theater during the afternoon, um, technical theater, dance. So there's plenty of opportunities to do both, just not necessarily at the same time, if that makes sense. All right. Um... So for uh, Mr. Rosenfeld, uh, is there a debate club and what tournaments do you participate in? Actually, um, we have a debate after school program. I don't know if, uh, if Steve, you feel comfortable talking a little bit more about that one? Uh, the, I don't, the debate afternoon activity has traditionally been for students who are new to debate. So debate is kind of, it's, it lives mostly in the club world. So um, they have a lot of meetings uh, in the afternoon on weekends. So that's something that students do in addition to whatever sport or other afternoon activity they generally do. The competitions happen on the weekend. They do, we do offer one season of debate as an afternoon activity, but that is geared for new and novice debaters to get them up to speed. So if you've never done it before and you're interested and you don't have anything else that appeals to you, then you would definitely sign up for debate or if debate's really um, something you're very interested in, um, especially for new students, that would be something you sign up for. But again, it's not a requirement to participate in debate as an afternoon activity to be in the debate program. In fact, the vast, vast majority of our debaters do not actually participate in debate as an afternoon activity. As far as uh, the club is concerned, yeah, it's it's a pretty large, pretty active one. Um, there are even a couple little mini branches of it. We have a women in debate club as well. 
Uh, as far as the different uh, competitions that they participate in, we actually host one on campus uh, that's actually pretty significant. I know they go to one out in Compton as well. Uh, they do one, I believe, at the uh, that's more local around the colleges around here. Um, Ms. Fisher is actually going to be, if you have specific questions about the debate program, she is our debate guru, our debate advisor, our debate teacher, our debate coach. Actually, she refers to it as varsity debate. Uh, and, and it's the varsity debaters who wind up actually going to those particular competitions. We had one out in, um, oh gosh, yeah, we had one, I want to say, yeah, Compton was the most recent one that we went to other than the one that we had on campus uh, in the winter. All right, so one, an, another question, where does golf practice and how does transportation work out getting to and from the facility? So our uh, girls team generally practices and plays at Marshall Canyon, which is a golf course here in Laverne. We have a, the coach drives a van off campus every afternoon. So while everybody else is, you know, changing and getting ready for their sport and going to their field, you're getting ready for your sport and then going to your van and you're driven over to the golf course. Um, depending on the day, you might work at the driving range or you might play. Usually we're not able to get nine holes in, um, in the practice time allotted, but uh, you might play uh, several holes or work on putting or work at the driving range or whatever the case may be. Um, our girls coach also is a trainer at a local facility. And so sometimes she'll take you over to that facility to, to work out on their machines and get some advanced training and that method. Our boys team, they play their um, matches at San Dimas Canyon golf course. Um, sometimes they practice there. Sometimes they'll practice at Marshall Canyon or sometimes they just want to change a pace and we'll go to Mountain Meadows. But again, the transportation idea is the same. You get ready, hop in the vans. Uh, we make sure the van can hold all the golf clubs and then you're off and running to whatever course or driving range you're going to play at that day. All right. So one question that is on the topic of clubs. Uh, are there any clubs or organizations related to student newspaper or magazines? Uh, there, there are, uh, but we actually have folded the uh, student newspaper at, uh, into it. Uh, it's actually a humanities class right now. And so there's actually three different levels. They all work together. Um, but yeah, there, there's a web canon chronicle run by Dr. Jula. And it's uh, primarily an online student newspaper at this point right now. And I believe you can go ahead and access that through our, our website. But that one actually has grown from a simple activity into a full-blown humanities-based program. Um, as, but we do have a variety of other different lit-based clubs. Uh, we do have Breakfast, which is a lit magazine uh, that is entirely student-run, but we do have faculty members who also actually contribute to it as well. Uh, so if writing is your thing, absolutely, there are great club opportunities for that. All right, so I have one last question uh, coming from Ileana. What arts classes are offered? Hey, Eliana, nice to talk to you. Okay, so during the day, the academic day, we have symphonia, choral music, visual art, digital art, and theater. Um, and then after school, we have theater, theater, tech, dance, uh, um, instrumental music, and we do have an art offering in the winter as well, where you can go and work on a portfolio or work on art projects. Well, everybody, it's sad to say our time together is rapidly coming to a close, but I believe we have time for one last question. If we weren't able to answer your question live, we're very sorry, uh, but our contact information will be made available and uh, we are going to post this information online. Uh, so please follow up with uh, one, some, or all of us uh, going forward if uh, there are any other questions that you have. Uh, Ms. Wiersma, uh, what's our last question gonna be for the day? All right, so this is gonna be from Mr. Wishick. So if your sport is off season, how do you stay in shape year round? For example, water polo or swimming? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we have various options. I mean, one of the best ways to stay in shape is to just play another sport. Uh, cross training and doing different activities are a great way to, to stay in shape. So just making sure you choose an afternoon activity that is, uh, well, has a fitness component, um, even a lot of them that you might not think do. I, I know that uh, Linda Silva, who runs our winter uh, instrumental program, she makes sure they're hiking and doing some yoga as well to stay physically fit. So you might want to uh, look into that. But that's one way to do it. Um, we do have a fitness center. Now, I do want to stress that fitness is not available to ninth graders. Um, we want our ninth graders trying out our various programs and participating. So the fitness class as an afternoon activity is not available to ninth graders, but you can work out at the fitness center after 
um, your class before dinner if there's time or on the weekends. You do have to be there with adult supervision, but that's usually not an issue. We do have lots of open gyms on the weekend, so that's one way to stay in shape. Um, in particular with swimming and water polo, um, you know, just depends on the season. So, you know, obviously that is a good combination. So I don't know whether you're a swimmer or a water polo first, but that combination of sports does really well um, together. And then it would just be a question, you know, in the fall season, you know, what do you find interesting, right? So maybe it's a sport you've never done before, but there's got to be something that you find interesting and that would certainly, whether it's a sport or an activity where you could find uh, an opportunity to stay fit. So that's how most of our students do it is, and I would say, even if you're not doing something that's primarily physically active, just the culture of the school and the opportunities. I mean, on the weekends, there's hikes and there's always kids playing tennis on the tennis courts, uh, no matter the time of day or, or part of season. Um, so there are plenty of opportunities for you um, to find like-minded individuals to, to work out with and stay fit with. I mean, and if it's something specific about swim or water polo, um, as far as opportunities are concerned, what I typically run for the, uh, for the swimmers or pretty much anyone who wants to participate in it, usually starting October, November, I'll start running morning uh, workout opportunities. And so we split our time. Some mornings we're in the pool and some mornings we're up in the fitness center. It uh, usually runs from 6.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the morning. It's 100% optional. Um, and you know, I've, the only rules that we have in there is that you have to be in bed by 10.30 the night before with all of your homework done, ready for class for the next day. And you can't be falling asleep in class. You have to be uh, fully alert, ready to go the next day, even if you do come in the morning. So uh, our swimmers in particular, if they want to go and, st and stay in shape, this does not count at all as, a, uh, a as an afternoon activity because we do it in the morning and it's 100% optional. But it's a great way to be able to go ahead and stay in shape in the off season. And uh, we get to know each other a little bit better as well. It's usually uh, a little bit less intense and a little bit more focused on really just staying in shape as opposed to really focusing on heavy duty conditioning. Well, Mr. Wishek, Ms. Plumley, and Ms. Mr. Rosenfeld, thank you so much again for being with us today for sharing such great information. Ms. Wiersma, thank you to you as well for doing such an amazing job moderating our Q&A. And to our attendees, thank you so much. Uh, for those of you for whom this was your first webinar, we hope you enjoyed it. For those of you who have been kind enough to join us these last few weeks for our webinars, thank you so much for your support. It's been a pleasure spending time with you and stay tuned for more in the days ahead.